today I want to show you how to make this tomato pie that I've been making for 40 years. It's so good, but it takes a lot of work. But a lot of it you can do in advance so that when it's time you can just put it together. Now the first thing you want to do is start with the crust because you really should make your own pie crust. You can make a bunch of it and put it in the freezer and then thaw it when you need it. Holidays are coming. It lasts. No two ways about it. Having said that, you want to do this with summer tomatoes as local as possible because they're the best. This pie is all about the tomato. And if you don't have a good tomato, like the winter tomatoes, forget it. It'll be over in a couple of months and then start making them again next July or August. Now, the crust. I have a couple of techniques that I use. What we're gonna do first is I am going to put four cups of unbleached, unbromated flour or some kind of organic flour into the processor. And it doesn't have to be an exact measure. I like to do a slightly heaping cup. And then we're going to add to that one cup of this should be a cake flour. To make cake flour, use cornstarch. This is the equivalent of two tablespoons, eighth of a cup. So I'm using it three quarters full. We're gonna put that in there. And we're gonna put a pinch of salt. We're gonna put the lid on the processor and mix this up first. You want an even mix on the cornstarch and the salt. Then what you want to do, I'm using butter and lard. 75% butter by weight to 25% lard. So I have uh, about a pound of flour in there. So I'm going to use three quarters of a pound of butter and a quarter pound of lard. So there's my 12. And this is, it was a pound of lard. I used three quarters of it, so I know that's a quarter pound. Now what I like to do, because lard is a lot softer than butter, is cut the lard into small squares into about a quarter inch square. And then it's going to go to the processor. I cut this in first because of it being softer. You want to make sure that you can use your butter and lard as cold as you can. It's a lot easier. And then I do like to, with my hands, sort of break this up a little bit. And then we're going to put the lid on. Get that mixed up by pulsing it. Okay. Now, we're going to take this butter. To save a mess, I like to cut it on the paper. And I'm going to cut the butter once that way. Then we're going to cut it this way. And then we'll turn it and cut it into a small dice going that way. What I like to do if I'm making a bunch of this is I cut all my butter so that when it's time to put the um, flour together with the lard and the butter, it all goes together really quick. So into the processor it goes. I'm not going to mix in the liquid with the processor because that really needs to be done by hand. So after those, after that butter is broken up into small cubes, take the lid and pulse it again. So that's all pulsed in. Now we're going to put it in the bowl and I'm going to take this just another step farther. And what we're going to do now is take this butter and lard mix and run it through your fingers. So you're sort of laminating it just slightly. You just want to not take the pieces of butter out. You want to keep some piece identity in there, but you want to coat the butter as good as you can with a little bit of flour. And then we're going to add a little bit of water to this. The reason that 
I like to do this part by hand is because you can feel it better. You'll come up with a much better crust. All right, so I'm going to add about, it's a dry day. It's probably going to take about three quarters cup of water. And I do like to use clean water filtered, you know, so you don't have any weird taste in this. Behaves better, especially with the unbleached, unbromated flour. And then mix this up. Be gentle when you mix. You want to fold the flour over the what? I guess I could have used a bigger bowl. However, I wanted to show you this in a glass bowl so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to bring the bottom to the top and just kind of gently squeeze it through my hands. You don't want to over mix this because you don't want a very tough dough. You also don't want to put too much water in this because that causes a lot of shrinkage. And so, it's not looking too bad. Nope, it's coming together pretty good. Okay, so, after this comes together fairly well, then take it out of the bowl I have to get this in there. Might take just a little bit more water, not much. Okay. I'm going to put just a touch over this. A spray bottle would really be ideal. That was no more than a couple tablespoons. And kind of mix that in. Sort of like when you're making pasta in the well. And, okay, now what we want to do. This is an extra step that not a lot of people do. However, it makes for a much flakier crust. It's French technique. If you're sort of making like a short puff pastry, what you do is take the heel of your hand and push the dough out. And you can see the layers that pushing it out creates. Fold it over, I'm gonna do it one more time in a nice cute little bowl. I love the board scraper. It becomes part of your hands. Bring that together. I'm going to push it out one more time. And there you have it. See how it's sort of flaking as it is? So now just put it together. Okay, so now I want to portion it. I'm going to portion this for large pies. And this will do two double crust pies or four single pies at, to the nine or 10 inch size. Having said that, to know where, what each one should weigh, I like to weigh them because it keeps them consistent. Put your whole ball on the scale and that's 46 ounces. So we're gonna divide that by four and then Now what you want to do is take a little bit of the flour, put it down on your surface, and form this into a hammer patty, for lack of better words, and flatten it out. Now the reason I want this to go to the refrigerator overnight <clears throat> is because I want the flour to fully hydrate, and it makes for a much better crust. Yeah, you can do it in an hour, but it's better to let it go overnight. So all I'm doing, it's not rocket science, that's it. You can see the pieces of butter still flaked in this dough, but make sure you wrap it. Actually, when I make this for all my pies, I put it on a sheet tray and I put paper in between the layers so that they don't stick on each other and then just cover it with this deli wax paper overnight. You can get away with doing that for about two days. And then you really should put this in a Ziploc and put it in the freezer, it keeps forever. So this is step one of the tomato pie. The pie dough is done, freezer bound. Next step, I'm gonna peel tomatoes. And I peel a lot of tomatoes. It actually goes pretty fast. That you can do in advance too, so. I'll show you when I get to that step. Gotta get some water boiling. Okay, the pie dough 101. Make extra, the holidays are coming. It thaws in no time. 
It's nice to have it in the freezer. All you have to do is roll it out. And it's so much better than what you're going to buy in the store. And all it is is flour, butter, lard, a little cornstarch, and a little salt. Okay, off to step two. All right, ready for the second step? Now you got to peel all these tomatoes. I have a nice mix of some heirlooms and some yellow tomatoes that I picked up out of Thurman's and some out of my garden. I have tomatoes everywhere. You can't really use cherry tomatoes for this, though I am going to peel these and turn these into sauce. I'm just going to use some nice heirlooms or I have a sink full of reds too. Now what you want to, what you're going to do is peel these and then before they turn into the pie, you're going to squeeze as much juice of these out as you can. Now the way you want to peel these is with, I have a bunch of different uh, paring knives, however, um, I like the short one for this type of a little operation because it's just perfect for my size of hand. And what you're going to do is put the point of the knife in and then turn the tomato around the knife. Not the hand, or well, it's, you sort of work it together, but move the tomato around the knife. Now, if these are, this doesn't really work very well on winter tomatoes, but what I did was blanch these for really no more than probably 10, 15 seconds. And they went into some boiling water as soon as I got the pot full of tomatoes. And I used a pot that you would cook pasta in. Hold, I put a gallon of water in it. Then what I did was filled it up. As soon as it was full, then I took, took the tomatoes out. So you can see again, tomato around the knife core comes out and the skins slip right off. Peeling tomatoes is really a nice way to go, especially for caprese salads, especially for tomato sauce. I peel them for everything because sometimes the skin on tomatoes is just a little bit too thick and it's so easy to do if you're just even having like a BLT. Take the skin off. It takes maybe the longest time it takes to boil the water. Anyway, see how easy they pop off? So now I'm going to do the rest of these tomatoes and all the tomatoes in my sink. Tomorrow we're going to shred some cheese, roll out the dough, clean and julienne some basil and chopped green onion, and then we can put them together. Okay, get busy. Takes a lot of tomatoes to do a pie. This amount of tomatoes would probably do a 10 inch pie because after you squeeze the juice, they kind of come down to nothing. All right, see you tomorrow. I really like using my KitchenAid to shred the cheese because you can use much better cheeses and it's a continuous feed. All you have to do is put the cheese up top and keep feeding it through and it grates really nice. I won't shred fresh mozzarella, but cheddars are perfect in it. Harder cheeses, Swiss, uh, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, run it all through into a bowl and then we're going to mix equal portions of mayonnaise by weight. Pound of cheese, pound of mayonnaise. I'll finish shredding this and we'll come back. Now it's time to roll out some pie dough so we can get it in the oven to pre-break these crusts. So all that dough that I made yesterday, I actually made a lot more. I'm going to show you what I do with an 8 ounce. Now this is pretty cold right out of the refrigerator and I'm dipping it in a little bit of flour, putting it on the board. I have a nice marble little slab that my sister picked up at a flea market for me. It's perfect. Anyway, when this, when this dough is cold right out of the refrigerator, what you want to do is take your pin and let the pin do the work. You're not using your arm, you're just letting the weight of the pin fall on. What this does is it keeps the dough from cracking because it's so cold. So we'll get that that far while I do another one. And OK. 
Okay. So now, with enough flour on the surface, you can roll it out. So I'm gonna let that go a little bit. Now we'll do this one again. Whoops, should put a towel under my marble, but the towel gets messy, another thing to clean so I don't mess with that. Anyway, I'm rolling this in a circular form, out and around, out and around, so that it goes into the pie pan relatively round. If I were doing a rectangle, I would strive a little bit more for a rectangle. So into the pan it goes. I like to leave a little extra because everybody loves this crust. Nobody has ever complained about the crust. I fit it down in the bottom. Then I'm going to take these, well I have to trim off a little bit of this. This is a little bit too much. So I'll take the edge of the knife, just go around the side. Or you can do this with the scissors. Oops. Okay, now that'll make a nice little small pie. Take this and I like to pinch the edges a little bit. Now when I put these in the oven, I'm going to, a lot of people use pie weights beans, you know, that kind of thing. I used to do all that, but what I found easier, faster, no beans to get hot, is put another pie tin, same size, right on top of it. Works like a charm. I do that with all my small ones. Now, as far as the small ones, these are quite cold too. I just dip them right in my little bag of flour that's over there because I go through so much flour that I'm not contaminating it. And, and that way it rolls a little easier. But you always want to turn the dough about a quarter of a turn so that you come up with something that's relatively round. Then this is going to go in the small ones and I get it to almost exact size. And then again, like the big one, stick another tin on top of it. If you're using glass Pyrex, that'll work too. Then I'm going to get all these on a sheet tray and they're gonna to go to a 375 fan or 400 degree oven, uh, convention oven, till they're golden brown. Just pick up, you know, you don't have to dock these too. And by docking, I mean, uh, because it's so flaky, taking a fork and pricking the bottom of it so it doesn't puff up. If you keep this on it, you don't have to do that. So, probably about 20 minutes or so in a 400 convection oven or 375 convection. All right, so that'll be another step in the series of the pie, and I'll show you what they look like when they're done in the oven. Well, let's do a little tomato pie recap. We made the dough. We refrigerated it overnight so it fully hydrates. Then we rolled it out. We pre-baked it and I came up with a really nice golden color. Pre-bake, I baked them at um, 375 with the fan on. Uh, 375 to 400, if it's 400, keep an eye on it. With another tin on top of it so it didn't puff up and it didn't shrink away totally. Then, we peeled all the tomatoes, they're ready to go, and we also made the cheese and mayonnaise mixture, grating the cheese, mixing it with equal portions by weight of mayonnaise. That's ready. Then, we have the fresh basil. Now, I don't like to do too much ahead of time with the fresh basil because it does tend to turn black, but what you're gonna do is just take some leaves off. Take a healthy amount. It takes kind of a healthy amount to get the flavor you want out of this. Pile them up on top of each other. And then, of course, chop them up. You could, tap, you could tear them as well. But kind of a coarse chop, 
I'm using it more as an herb than I am um, a julienne leaf. Here, we'll do a couple more. All right, now, since the shell is ready to go, here's what we're gonna do. Now for the tomatoes. This is not the tricky part, but it's a very important part. And what you wanna do with the tomatoes is you have to juice these, especially the heirlooms, because they're so juicy, you don't want the juice in this pie shell. Take the tomato and press the juice out in the container itself, okay? And then I have a little plastic, it's actually a lid to a bowl, but I don't want the juice running all over the place, so that's why I don't do it on the board. This has a little bit of a, maybe almost a one inch lip on it, so it'll catch the juice, which I do save, strain it, get all the seeds out, and then reduce it down by about three quarters, and it makes a wonderful tomato sauce. Absolutely heaven, or freeze it, can it, whatever. That's another video. But so you have these tomatoes. I'm going to use a combination of these yellow tomatoes. I got them from Thurman's out in Grand Rapids, Ohio. And they call them a lemon tomato. They're really quite tasty. And the reds. And then, now it takes quite a bit of tomatoes because, you know, by the time you squeeze the juice out, and then of course we're going to bake it the second time. There really isn't all that much of a meaty substance. Now, don't be tempted to use a Roma tomato. A Roma tomato is a sauce tomato, and it's not what you want for this. Yeah, there's less juice in them, but these tomatoes are better. Only catch is, like I say, take the juice out. So, I'm going to do a healthy amount. All right, so we have the <clears throat> tomatoes juiced. We have the basil cut. I went ahead earlier and pre-chopped some, ch some green onions or scallions. Now what you're gonna do is cut these in a thick slice so that you retain a little bit of identity because they will cook down a little bit in the oven. I have my oven preheated at 550 degrees. I want this to go hot and fast to brown the top the longer you cook this, the more juice is going to be released. And if you want to warm it later, do it for sure the first time, hot and very fast. Under the broiler, uh, I've tried that before, but it tends to burn the crust. The hotter the oven, the better. All right, so these are kind of cut. Now, for the last squeeze, what you want to do is take these in your hands and see if you can press out any more juice, which normally you can and then you're going to pile them into this crust this makes the best tomato sauce when the tomatoes are good in the summer oh my god I take it down a half gallon of sauce like one of the mayonnaise containers I showed you earlier I reduce that down to about a cup cup and a half and it is so good tossed over some noodles. Unbelievable tasty. Or a risotto, tomato risotto, it's just heaven. Now I don't bother slicing these nice and neat, you know, to be able to lay out in a circular or whatever kind of pattern because for this it really doesn't make any difference. The object is get rid of that juice. All right, so that looks pretty good. I have these nice and piled. You want to put more than you think you need in here because like I say, they do cook down. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to put chopped green onions on the top. I like a fair amount of chopped green onions because it adds one, a little bit of flavor, but it adds some texture to this too so that it doesn't, you know, you're not eating like baby food or something. Anyway, then a fair amount of the chopped fresh basil, actually a lot. And it's plentiful right now. You want to get this out of your garden pretty quick because, oh, it's turning to winter. 
Then we're going to salt and pepper evenly over the top. You let it rain, not real close. Don't put your salt and pepper on real close. Up top so you get a nice even distribution. Then you're going to pepper it well. And then we're going to cheese it up. The best part. I use a scoop because it's easy. So you want to put a fair amount on. For this size, it's an eight ounce or an eight inch pie tin. I use three nice scoops on the top. And then with the back of a damp knife or spatula or whatever you've got, a, an offset spatula, press it down a bit so you have it kind of in an even layer. The oven is going to help melt this evenly over the top. Okay, it is finally ready for the oven. Praise the Lord. It takes a while, but now about probably, depending on how long your oven has been preheated, five to seven minutes in a 550. Mine might take a little bit longer because I just put it on. But then I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like when it's done. But doesn't that look luscious? That cheese gets nice and golden and crispy. And, oh, it's just heaven. Summer only. Make some now because after the tomatoes are done, you won't be making any until next July. All right, off to the oven. Well, my oven preheated really well. It was at 550. Having said that, this went actually really fast. It was about seven minutes. Now, doesn't that look lovely? It's nice and evenly golden. The cheese melted all over the top. And this can be served either room temperature or hot or cold. It's really good. And I am going to take this to my sister's in Shirley, and we are going to cut into it with some friends. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's cut. Since it's tomato season here in Northwest Ohio and they're everywhere, I also made a tomato and mozzarella salad, a caprese, but the way the Italians make it, we're not gonna be putting any vinegar on this. It's just really good tomatoes, fresh mozzarella, the fresh um, chopped basil, of which I use Genovese basil because I really like it, a little bit of lettuce, I'm not going to salt this yet because I'm taking it with me. I'll salt it just before we serve it. The fresh pepper, and then it gets some really good olive oil drizzled over the top. Anyway, that's going to go with a smoked brisket and some mashed potatoes to celebrate the coming of fall. But anyway, I hope you try this. Yes, it takes a lot of steps. Yes, it's a lot of work. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Will you want to make it in the winter? Yes. Should you? know? So... Make it and get your fill of tomatoes now because tomatoes, you won't be able to really make this until mid-July next year. I did start I did start making tomato pies. I just made one for myself with some Tennessee tomatoes that come up here a little bit early, but it's not the same. Anyway, having said that, these are really good. They've been in my repertoire for over 40 years and well worth the effort. Thanks for watching. I hope you give this a whirl, like, share this video with your friends, and hope to see you at the Toledo Farmer's Market. So much stuff right now, you have no idea. Good time to preserve it, can it, and eat what you can before it all disappears. Okay, see you again on the next video.